I'm Robert Peake again. This, I'm the Director and General Manager of Business Development at Jacksport. I want to thank everyone for joining us today for the Propeller Club Port of Jacksonville State of the Port. And joining today is Beth McKay. Beth joining us virtually. Beth is Jacksport's Chief Financial Officer. Beth, thanks you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Robert. And again, thanks to everybody for joining us today in this virtual program. So this is the final segment uh, of, of our session today, and it's the interactive one where we're asking you to ask us questions that we can answer about Jacksport, about our strategic plan, about our plans for the future. And we've asked Beth to join us, not only because she's our chief financial officer, but also because Beth is one of the key architects of Jacksport's new strategic master plan. And Beth has worked very closely with our CEO, Eric Green, and with our senior leadership team to, to craft this plan. So uh, some of you have already started sending questions. We're gonna ask you to continue to send uh, more questions in for us using the question function on your GoToMeeting app. Um, and one of the first questions we wanna ask Beth, it has to do with uh, the strategic plan and our diversification within it. We talk about diversifying trade lanes. And specifically, I wanna ask about the island of Puerto Rico because while we want to grow, certainly as a global port, uh, harbor deepening is a big part of that. Today, uh, the island of Puerto Rico is still Jacksport's largest trading partner, and it has been for many years. So talk to us about the importance of Puerto Rico to Jacksport's trade, not only today, but the importance of Puerto Rico to, to Jacksport in the future, uh, given that there's so many carriers, businesses, and shippers which rely on that trade with Jacksport. Yes, thank you. So the Puerto Rican trade lane is extremely important to Jackson, Jacksport, not just historically, which is obvious, but very critical to our future. It's the island of Puerto Rico, the people of Puerto Rico, and of course our carriers, who over the years uh, have spread uh, that Puerto Rican trade lane throughout the Caribbean and Latin America. So as they grow, Jacksport grows, and we're delighted to support them in that growth. Very importantly, it is our Puerto Rican carriers who put Jacksport on the world stage, as Andre Wallace just talked about, with the LNG facilities, uh, the storage and fueling capabilities. And we're already seeing uh, other ships other than those uh, ships built by those carriers coming to Jacksport to be fueled by this eco-friendly fuel. So we're delighted. Uh, we have excellent relationships with our partners, our Puerto Rican carrier partners, and we're delighted to support their growth in the future. Very important to Jacksport over the long term. You know, Beth, I agree. And I've always believed you dance with the one that brought you. And if you look at the history of the Port of Jacksonville, it's been really our Puerto Rican carriers, uh, the shippers, and all the businesses uh, supporting the, the Jacksport Puerto Rican trade lane and our automobile business, really, which has really grown uh, our business to a point where we are today, where we can now grow deep in our harbor and really grow internationally. So, you know, we'll always remember kind of, you know, the foundational uh, businesses that we have, and they're really an important part of our strategic plan moving forward. And, and Beth, that really segues into the next question that we have, and that has to do with congestion we're seeing at other ports. You know, uh, as ports grow, um, we, we look at ports to our north, we look at ports on the west coast, we see that it takes, in some cases, days for these uh, ships to be able to get to berth. We do not have that problem here in Jacksonville. How does our strategic plan um, uh, set, set us up for us to be able to properly design and build facilities so that our carriers and our beneficial cargo owners avoid the congestion problems long term we're seeing at other ports? Well, yes, that's a great question because we see the congestion at us other ports as an opportunity for Jacksport. We are known as a port that's easy to do business with. We are congestion free and we work at that. Uh, we, uh, ha we are improving our berths uh, across our terminals so that we can accommodate uh, ships very easily and uh, be able to move their uh, cargo very easily. We thank our partner FDOT for the help they give us is improving those births and improving the births and we'll continue to improve the births. In addition to that, uh, we have our engineers working on improving uh, our exits and entrance into our busiest terminal, Blunt Island, so that the traffic can uh, flow very quickly. Again, so we're known not just at the waterfront, but throughout the terminal as congestion free and easy to do business with. We pride yeah. ourselves on great customer service, on a high level of service, we like to think of ourselves as a niche port, very responsive to customer needs. And uh, and so we, we're we not particularly happy when we hear that other ports are, are have congestion, but 
but we know this is a great opportunity for us to attract more business to Jacksport. Beth, that segues into the next question that has, has been submitted, and that re that's regarding the timing of harbor deepening and the timing of our, of our terminal improvements. So we've mentioned before that our harbor deepening has been expedited. It's going to be, be finished ahead of time. Um, how are our terminal improvements, uh, particularly at Blunt Island, um, shaping up to make sure that we're fully ready to take advantage of, of the opportunity with deeper water? Yes, the uh, harbor deepening, we are happy to re continue to report is ahead of schedule. And by the way, also under budget, we're happy about that. Uh, and uh, drawing back to the 2014 strategic plan that the Jacksport had in place, one of the uh, infrastructure improvements was the berth berths out on the deep water at 33, 34, and 35 Blunt Island. 35 has already been completed, and we're in the last stages of the completion of the rehab of 33 and 34. What that means is, uh, once the harbor is deepened, we'll be able to accommodate two post-Panamax ships at one time. Ultimately, we'll have six cranes who are moving cargo off and on those ships. Uh, so we have methodically, uh, produced uh, the, the best outcome for a quick transfer of car, cargo and ease of use of our busiest terminal, Blunt Island. Yeah, I think it, and it's, a, it's a good answer, Beth. It's a good question to make sure that our terminal improvements are aligned with all of our other harbor improvements to take full advantage. So I think that's, that's an excellent question. Uh, Beth, another question that's been submitted it has to do with our strategic plan, and that is, you know, uh, we've had a, a number of strategic plans over the years that you know there's a defined timeline we we complete that plan then we move on to the next plan and the question specifically is how does this strategic plan differ from our, our previous strategic plan yes yeah, so uh the 2014 plan was a really good plan and uh, the way i describe it it really focused on the infrastructure needed to support the harbor deepening so it was an extensive plan that had big projects included in it uh, for instance, um, Mile Point, which eliminated a navigational problem uh, for the, for uh, some of the ships, and uh, the build out of the uh, ICTF on Dames Point. Uh, it was a very big plan, very focused, and methodically implemented. Uh, so our new plan is a, uses that as a springboard. We looked at that plan and said the infrastructure is in place. Now we have to work on uh, increasing our business to take full advantage of all this investment into harbor deepening and the port facilities so that we have uh, we are returning uh, returning on the investment to the community i think that 2014 plan also shows that we have the ability uh, to follow and uh, implement very uh, strategically the most important improvements that we can make to the port and we are taking that uh, taking that with us as we move into our new strategic plan. I think it's well said, Beth, that the, the 2014 plan really uh, set us up well for this plan to take full advantage, you know, building out what we can do commercially. And, and we're very excited about that. Um, Beth, we only, we, you know, believe it or not, we're kind of running out of time. We only have time for one more question or so. But I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and, and sum up. There's, a, there's, a, there's a, a number of questions that people have asked, but I'm going to kind of sum it up. In, into this and that is about challenges. And when you look for this strategic plan for the next, let's say five years or so, what do you think is, is either the or one of the biggest challenges that we're facing as a port in order for us to be successful? Yes, yeah, so we have great relationships with our tenants and we wanna make sure that we have everything they need to succeed. And so a part of that is the ability to grow. Uh, we, we make good use of all the space we have, but our biggest challenge is how can we acquire land to be able to support the growth of our tenants? Because when our tenants grow, then we are growing and we're all succeeding together. So whether that property is on, on, on water or near water, uh, we'll be looking hard. It's one of our highest priority that our senior staff is very engaged in uh, to find the right uh, appropriate property for industrial use. Uh, that can make the most of these wonderful facilities that we have built and will continue to build at Jacksport. Agreed, Beth, that, you know, out of our 10 strategies, one of them says, you know, acquire additional property in order for us to take advantage of all the commercial opportunities we see over the next five years. There are a lot of other really great questions that people have submitted. I apologize we don't have time for them, but what we are going to do is we're going to take all those questions we're going to answer them and bundle all of that into a blog post that we're going to post and make accessible through our website at jacksport.com. So look for that in the near future. 
Uh, Beth, I want to thank you for joining us today and for helping do such a good job of answering all of our questions. It's my pleasure. I also want to thank the Propeller Club, uh, the Port of Jacksonville and its president and its, its leadership for uh, putting on this great state of the port at a time, uh, a very trying time with COVID. And thank you for letting us share all this great information with you. And on behalf of our CEO, Eric Green, and our senior leadership, our board of directors, I'm going to say thank you for your time today and for all of your support. We are so excited about the future of this port, short term and near term. And we really look forward to all of you being a part of it. So to learn more about Jacksport and our strategic plan, please visit us at jacksport.com. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, thank you very much.